Hello everyone and hello once again YouTube. This is Mia, your daily news broadcaster signing back in to give you the latest news and happenings on your fa on our favorite blockchain. Now for this our video guys will be talking about any updates with our favorite EOS tokens. But first before we go that to that art um to that article guys, I would just like to invite you all to join us with this new initiative gear program here. Now, Initiative Q is an attempt by XPayPal guys to create a new payment system instead of the existing old credit card system that was designed way back in the 1950s. Now, the system uses its own currency called the Q, and to get people to start using this system once it's ready, they are allocating Qs for free to people like you who sign up now. Now, the amount drops later as more and more people join, so it's better for you to join now while it's free and it's still early. Now, signing up to Initiative Q is completely free, which uh, they will only be needing your name and an email address. There is nothing to lose, but if this payment system becomes a world-leading payment method, your queues can be worth a lot. So guys, if you missed getting Bitcoin 7 years ago, you would not want to miss this one. Now here is your special limited invite link in the description there below. Now, the link shown will stop working once we are out of free invites. Now guys, we only have a few slots left remaining, so click it now and don't get left behind on this one. Alright? Okay, so moving forward, let's go to the article entitled EOS Ecosystem Shoots Beyond 1.2 Billion in 80 Days. It's been four months since the launch of EOS Mainnet. During the first two months, everything seems to have fallen into silence along with a downturn of the crypto market. However, EOS seemingly embraced its first wave of explosion in the past two and a half months starting from mid-August, reaching 8.2 billion RMB or $1.2 billion USD or USD within 80 days. Some people were befuddled, befuddled. Now, without further ado, the app review will now unravel the myth behind the dazzling numbers of our readers via a few angles. The bundled PR strategy of Wallet plus EOS Notes, the countless peripheral positive cash flow opportunities, and how the investors profit or lose money from those D apps. Here, let's we'll go to the first one. The Fearless EOS. One to three D apps went live from August 10th to October 30th, totaling 20 or 220 million EOS or equivalent to 8.2 billion RMB or 1.2 billion dollars. Here, so this is the daily transaction volume of all the apps on EOS there. Now, close to half of those D apps fell under the vice category or to be more exact, gambling. The blue sea two months ago is now despicable red, or despicably red. The apps were launching every other day. In the first 1.5 months, EOS Bet enjoyed its first mover advantage, or read, received an awful lot of cash, until the burst of Bet Dice that suddenly broke its records in a single aspect, and even spiked above the unimaginable. 10 million EOS inflow line in one day. Fast forward to mid-October, when we saw blooming waves of gameplay fighting brutally just for inches of EOS market or market share. Farm EOS, EOS Poker, Endless Dice, and others. Here. Now these are the ton or top 10 D apps. Here. Among the top 10 D apps, 7 are gambling, 2 are DEX, and the one remaining is a CPU rental service. Once you take a look at the table, you should be able to grasp why the gambling space is a cruel red sea. The top 10 generate 
revenue of 190 million plus EOS versus the remaining 51 that only share 1.7 million EOS. Extreme Matthew effect indeed. Mechan 1.1 Mechanism and competition in the gambling gameplay. Holistically speaking, most EOS gambling games follow a similar rudimentary framework despite the variety of rules. Here's how it works. The D app issues its own tokens in the game and distributes the tokens proportionally by the amount users contribute in every round. The rewards also follow a halving schedule every specific period of time. The development team periodically distributes dividends to all the token holders. Although the unexpected order, although the expected value of the winning probability is such, um, gambling games is negative. Token holders, assuming they are rational investors, could still realize profits from dividends and sell tokens once the token is listed. We have a few examples here. One is EOS Bet. EOS Bet is the first gambling D app on EOS, also being the first one distributing dividends. The good user experience coming from its strong operation easily sent it to the top of the EOS D app ranking. Nonetheless, the tokens are not transferable, nor were they listed on any exchange. In other words, it lacks necessary liquidity. Many players with a large share of tokens could hardly cash out despite all the dividends received. Not to mention that it got hacked twice. The game list or the game itself did not seek improvement in gameplay or operation strategies since the initial launch, so people got bored of the game more or less quickly. The game Bet Dice, a game with seemingly better operation, tech and token economy design speedily took it over the top ranking of EOS bet. Bet dice. One, the well-designed token economy and the promise of exchange listing enticed a bunch of initial miners. The bounty program, referral rewards, and lottery program also attracted some early adopters of the game. The participation of these miners and players contributed a dividend pool with a considerable size. 2. Benefiting from the halving mining schedule, Bet Dice allowed early miners and private investors to reap profits from trading on the exchange, whereas retail investors who are bullish on the dividends can buy tokens on the exchange. 3. The game was able to control the amount of tokens circulating in the market and thus stabilize the token price by applying a stocking or staking program to lock up tokens and avoid volatile market movement. Such market making ability attracted more capital injection. 4. The lottery gameplay intensified user retention of the game as it diver or diversified the product offering. The VIP program also improved the user experience for the players who spent a lot. The acceptance of BT and Black Token for payment opened up other channels of customer acquisition. In a word, BetDice embraced true prosperity with the optimizing efforts described above and never fell off from the top since the beginning of October. Since mid-October, tens of new gameplay came into the limelight, including Farm EOS, EOS Poker, and Endless Dice. Here, EOS Poker was the first EOS gambling game that involved some strategy or game theory. More complicated, but more fun for the players. The D app was able to kick off the project with only the miners by allowing them mining with low cost optimal strategies and trade with a preset price on the exchange. The first group of players were attracted by the game or to the game by dividends they could earn from their collateralized tokens. The team also complemented players with poker tokens to exchange for players taking CPUs. 
Though it got hacked once, the dev team announced it would accept all responsibility and make up players' losses. Endless Device was a game that hyped late, yet still hyped. Quoting the mechanic analysis from a Chinese crypto community and media. Quoting, the essence of the game lies within the trading volume, which was pushed up by the miners and the having schedule end quote. The game doesn't have a token sale, meaning no pre-mine, allowing the game to start generating dividends shortly. As a result, first mover advantage of the early adopters was high enough to attract miners and large investors to participate in the trading. For example, an account named like Terry Fox, a large token holder in Bet Dice as well as the largest holder of um, ET, has owned 4.15 million tokens in Endless Dice and accumulated 3,000 plus EOS from the game. Immediately after the game hit the halving point, the token was listed on new decks to gain more liquidity. A very strategic move on behalf of the game. The dividends bring more players on board and higher trading volume. More importantly, the game does not require depositing the tokens as collaterals to receive dividends. In a nutshell, the halving schedule is mining or in mining is a seemingly direct and simple way to kick off and to incentivize the early participants. Still, a game without a matrix of products and corresponding operational strategy can simply die hard and quickly. Note, all these DApps are highly risky. This article only aims to articulate how the ecosystem works but not to provide any investment advice. 1.2. Exchange on EOS DEX, or a decentralized exchange, has long been a thriving category in the Ethereum ecosystem. Usually, there are two types of DEX. One, order book no mode, where it has on-chain and off-chain order book. The former has a higher degree in decentralization, but is not so cost-effective and efficient. The latter is more seen in the DEX world, with OX as the best-known project, others including Ether Delta and Loop Pairing. 2. Reserve Mode This type is more sensitive to the trading speed targeting some instant trading scenarios such as internal DEX of a wallet, an example which be Kiber Network. DEX is the second largest type of DApp on EOS, with a user activity level slightly below gambling DApps. Higher speed and no gas fee are the two features that offset the weakness of a lower degree of decentralization on EOS to some extent. Still, DEX on EOS are very nascent. The most mature one in the market is probably Nudex, as it delivers the best user experience and owns more than 80% of the market share with its trending DAU and trading volume. Here. Now this is the daily transaction volume of all DEX on EOS. There. Here. For some technology as uh, technology standpoint, Nudex is a centralized exchange with user experience of DEX. In other words, while Nudex allows users to trade seamlessly in the internal wallet like how people trade on a DEX, the operation is still centralized. As the user created an order, the tokens are transferred to a temporary account on Nudex and are transferred back when the order is filled. This process does not require any smart contract. Also, despite a more secure process brought by the shortened period of time when users' funds are exposed and under risk, the settlement mechanism is still similar or similar to a centralized exchange. Here. 
Ethereum in total has generated 4.68 million Ethereum YTD up to October 20, 2018, of which 960,000 Ethereum are on gaming. EOS has created a much more impressive record with uh, within a much more shorter period. A crucial reason being that the Chrome combo is high TPS and no transaction fee allows gamers or players to have very smooth gaming experience in games that require high frequency such as dice. 2. The bundled PR strategy in EOS or EOS ecosystem. 2.1 nodes. Now, this is the incomprehensive list of EOS nodes here. So now, on the one hand, or on the one hand, a node usually holds a large amount of EOS, which incentivizes itself to work hard on promoting EOS for mass adoption. On the other hand, each node has had done enough work to build a community when it ran campaigns for the EOS Super Nodes election. These nodes have both participated and natural pers propensity to create and promote the apps. The competition among these nodes is double-edged, whilst they compete in sub-sectors such as wallet and sidechain. They are in the same boat when it comes to the prospect of EOS. 2.2 Wallet Since early this year, DR Preview has mentioned a couple times that the major race for wallets is way ahead to start. The lead runners are only leading for now. There is essentially no use case with massive adoption, and as a result, any wallet that captures the right wave of mass adoption could easily attain millions of users. Back in the day when ICOs just became familiar, I'm Token was able to capture the retail demand to participate in the institutional sales. It was so successful that many newbies even thought an I'm Token address was equivalent to any Ethereum address that is on China. Fast forward to today, under this severely deteriorated market, the number of retail investors has tumbled so much that the remaining users would only use their wallets for a deposit and even without interest. Many won't open their wallets for days or weeks. Now in summary, no one will use a wallet without a legit use case that could ignite mass adoption. Here now, they are, um, these are the DApp wallets. The vast majority of DApp users are ca captured by a few early mover wallets. Results from our research among Chinese DApp communities like WeChat and international communities like Discord show that Trust Wallet and Kobo Wallet are, on, are the go-to wallets for Ethereum DApps, whereas Token Pocket, uh, Meet.1, Math Wallet, and BitPortal are the ones for EOS D apps. Wallets play a key role in promoting EOS D apps. It's reciprocal for both sides, as wallets need use cases to activate their existing users, while D apps love wallets that can bring in traffic. A wallet with a large amount of users is even handed with a D app that has quality content at this moment, no real buyer or seller market has formed yet. Here. Now from left to right are the popular EOS wallets in China. Namely, Token Pocket, Meet.1, and Math Wallet. There. These EOS wallets do not have a high entry barrier for a D app to be listed nor do they charge any fee for listing, but earn referral the rewards for the traffic generated via the ref link. More than two wallets have reaped 1 million plus RMB profit just through this promotion channel, per our information source. Worth mentioning is that some nodes have invested in wallets like Token Pocket and Meet One. 
Such a strategic partnership creates strong synergy to convert a few thousand wallet users into dApp users. On the other hand, the more decentralized operational management in Ethereum does not allow the existence of super nodes. The Ethereum dApp community fails to have more diverse promotional drivers other than Discord, Reddit, Medium, Twitter, Telegram, and other bloggers on social media. As a result, user acquisition is not as effective on the target audiences as the approaches used in EOS. 3. Other opportunities proliferated from the ecosystem. In addition to EOS dApps, many people sense the opportunities, or speculative or not, around the ecosystem and wanted to take a bite from the 8 billion cake. These opportunities include metrics management, read manipulation, churning, CPU rental services, mining bots, and operational services. 3.1 Metrics Management or read manipulation. This um, here, you can see on this image, are the top 10 ESD apps ranked by the app review. Straightforward as it is, players are more or less likely to derive profits if they join when a D app is in hype or before it hypes, if it ever does. They could easily be underwater if they join other after the peak. Users are likely to follow the rankings that institutions like DApp Radar and DApp Review provide. And to make decisions of entry or exit upon the stats, as a result, DApps are incentivized to leverage the bot services to interact with the smart contracts and quickly get to top. This kind of service usually charges 300 to 500 EOS. Here. Our view on this is that fraudulent activities can hardly be cleansed in any nascent industry or sector, especially without much regulation. People who participated in speculative activities also, to some extent, encouraged the fraud. For a D app that has quality content, diverse product offering, and reasonable token economy design, it creates value for users beyond monetary values, example externally, and then it's less meaningful to leverage such services. Furthermore, going forward, third-party ranking services are looking to add weight to metrics other than user activities. Our uh, user activity statistics in the ranking model. In the end, all that matters is having fun products that keep us or keep real users. No speculation can stand out, and even if it stands out for a bit, it won't last. 3.2 Churning Most ESD apps have bounty programs like Airdrop and Candies to attract new users. People who hold a large number of EOS accounts collateralize CPUs via their accounts in use and churn with the phantom accounts. There are simply too many ways to churning. According to the developers at yum.game, we blocked more than 20,000 EOS churning accounts overnight. Among 460,000 users on the mainnet, the app review estimates more than 100,000 accounts are phantom accounts, and that's on the conservative end. 3.3 CPU rental resource. Now, in the image here, EOS Knight recommends taking more than 0 0.3 second CPU to play the game. There. EOS confirmed the quota of CPU proportionally. When the total amount of collateralized CPU skyrocketed, players could hardly enjoy a smooth gaming experience or take any action if they don't stake more EOS. EOS Knights, the only top-ranked non-gambling EOS game, 
requires players to stake than 100,000 EOS in order to game smoothly under light traffic. Not to mention that the requirement could easily spike to 300 plus EOS if a player wants 0 0.3 second CPU under a BC network. Here. Now, CPU rental service provided in token pocket. Here. Now, rental service comes to the market as a result as not all players are willing to collateralize a large amount of EOS, but rather would like to pay interest for the rental. Among the three rental services shown above, some could even accept Alipay, creating a seamless product experience. The interest rate for the fee business falls between 0.2% to 1% daily way higher than most of the asset management or even P2P lending products. The business itself also has seemingly low entry barrier but high, high reward. 3.4 Mining Bots Now here are mi some mining bot service in token pocket. Example here is EOS Robot. As soon as the games allowed people to mine, all kinds of mining bots started to proliferate. The screenshot above is the mining section in the Discover page of Token Pocket. So why mining? In the gambling dApps, players receive tokens proportionally corresponding to the amount they put in. People could cash out either via dividends or through trading on exchanges. Miners have accumulated a large amount of tokens by betting with optimal winning probability. Despite the fact that players have negative expected value for profit in the game due to the 1.5% house edge, players could still offset the negative ex expected value with the dividends and the secondary market opportunities. 3.5 Operational Services Fee business always has low risk and low entry barrier. The Air Preview recently noted or noticed that some people have been providing highly profitable operational services that include one getting listed on D app rankings, example the app review or the app radar. 2. Getting listed on wallets, example Token Pocket and Meet That One. 3. Promotional reviews on all kinds of social media. And 4. Selling the D app in a group chat like WeChat, Telegram, Kakao, and so much more. Just a friendly reminder that item number 1 and 2 are completely free, at least for now. Those service providers are simply earning money from information asymmetry. Here. Problems and Prospects Although the ESD app ecosystem has been triumphed um, in the past two and a half months, there are still pain points yet to be solved. 4.1 Users The current gambling players are all existing EOS holders. For the non-crypto people, who are still the absolute majority of the world, the threshold is high when it comes to creating an account, not to mention the following steps like grasping how the whole CPU, NE at, RAM thing works, and then actually acquiring the tokens and eventually playing. At the same time, a lot of retail investors lost all their tokens when they were betting. From what we've seen, there were even online chat groups that help you quit gambling in EOS. 4.2 Smart Contracts It could or it could sound ridiculous, but the smart contracts of most EOS gambling games are simply not open sourced. Players seem to enjoy the non open source D apps as much as they loud laud how blockchain made games more fair and transparent. No one would know how the mechanism or the probability actually works if the codes are not open source. The hacking events even became an excuse for the DApp developer's choice of not disclosing the code. Just ask yourself, 
how much longer dare you play with such open source the apps 4.3 gaming content needless to say mechanism of gambling games does not have much diversity the real differentiation or competition was just the token economy and the operational tactics not much challenge lies on the development side a few friends who own notes themselves more or less agree that gambling could be a means to test how ecosystem plays out, but not an end. To get to the next level, refinement from the middle layers and infrastructure such as protocols like ERC721 and ERC1155 are definitely being called for. 5. Highly risky investment and how the investors make money. The apps have received investments from individuals and institutions. Investors simply buy the tokens in EOS with a discount and earn dividends. Now, once the token gets listed on new decks, they could either sell or continue to hold for more dividends. During the bear market in the past few months, BitDai's tokens grew against the trend to 17 times at least 1 EOS to 600 dice and from the 1 EOS to 10,000 dice price at private sale. For some other tokens, we also see growth between 2 to 8 times. Still, not all tokens have much performance nor could everyone hold to his or her tokens till the max point. Would like to um, yeah. We'd like to end this article by comparing EOS with Ethereum again. Despite the fact that the revenue generated and training activities on EOS have surpassed Ethereum for now, we can hardly say that EOS is anywhere close to where Ethereum ecosystem is. In fact, judging from the angle of diversity and complexity, the apps on EOS score way better. Truth is that while EOS has better performance on the gambling category, Ethereum is not disadvantaged at all when it comes to collectible games or strategy games that do not require higher interaction frequency. Furthermore, the network effect on Ethereum is global, whereas EOS seems to have captured attention mostly from Asia. The majority of ESD apps players are in China, Japan, Korea, and Singapore. As the app review communicated with some developers and players overseas, we found that many of them did not follow EOS at all or were not aware of the EOS D app explosion over the past two months. And that really said something about the next step for the EOS ecosystem. We truly look forward to more types of games and applications and more new users from other regions joining the ecosystem and eventually mass adoption. All right, guys, so that was for the article about our favorite EOS. Now, guys, what can you say about this one? Share with us your opinions on our comment section below. All right, so that's it, guys. That concludes the video for the day. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more updates. This is once again Mia, your daily news broadcaster, signing off. And I'll see you next time. Until then, guys. Bye.